Hey YouTubers, I'm here today with the Fuji GA645ZI. This is a medium format camera shooting the smallest format of medium format that is six centimeters by four and a half centimeters. This camera is a really nice camera. It offers a lot of automation if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, I think it's a great travel camera. Uh, being a six by four and a half, it's uh, fairly compact. Uh, these cameras can be made fairly small. This one is particularly small because it has a retractable lens and it's pretty easily packable. You probably don't have much to compare it to here. Um, but you can tell, you know, next to my hands, it's not a super large camera. It's very easy to carry. If you strap it over your shoulder and kind of throw it behind your back, you can kind of forget it's there. Uh, it's very easy to throw into a suitcase or a travel bag and you'll never know that it's there but it'll be there when you need it. In terms of construction the camera it has a titanium skin uh, but it's got quite a bit of plastic on it as well however it's a pretty solid camera. Um, I have no complaints about the way it's built it feels good in the hand and uh, it feels like a quality piece if you don't like this champagne titanium color they do make a, a black version of it However, the black version of it commands a premium. It's quite a bit more expensive than this one, and it's fairly rare as well. Ergonomically, the, the camera's pretty good. You can see how my thumb fits into this little, um, into this kind of thumb rest here, and it's got a nice grip on the front. So let's talk a little bit about the features of the camera. First off, it has autofocus. It has a zoom lens. It's a relatively short zoom range. Uh, it's a 55 to 90 zoom, which is really sort of wide to just barely longer than normal in medium format terms. I think because of the design of this lens, meaning the very narrow zoom range, and also they didn't try to make it a super fast lens in terms of the maximum aperture, I think they were trying to get it to uh, be the highest quality zoom lens they could make, and in my experience, it is super high quality. Uh, in terms of its picture taking abilities, the resolution of the lens is great. As a matter of fact, Interestingly enough, with all the nice cameras I have, I have more pictures on the wall from this camera than any other camera that I own, probably because it's the easiest to take along. Another aspect of this camera is that it's an auto exposure camera. It has a program mode, it has an uh, aperture priority mode, and it has a full manual mode. Um, the mode is set on this dial right here, and there's an interlock. You have to push this button down to change the setting and I'm going to turn it on right now and now it's in program mode and you heard the lens open so there's the lens at its um, shortest focal length alright so normally I'll shoot it in aperture priority and to change the aperture you have to use this mode dial or multifunction dial I'm not sure what they call it uh, and you look at the LCD panel on the back and you can see right now that the aperture is at f4.5 and if I turn the dial, you can see the aperture changing. And you do exposure compensation, again, by pushing this little button down. This is kind of a multifunction button as well. Um, you push that down and use the multifunction dial, and then you can set your plus or minus offset from normal exposure. Uh, in manual mode, you're responsible for setting both your shutter speed and your aperture. My aperture has stayed where I left it. I'm still using this dial to change the aperture. The trick is if you want to change the, the uh, shutter speed you have to hold this button down while you turn the dial. So now I'm changing the shutter speed and you can see the readout there. The other stuff on the panel here is the big number is my frame counter. Uh, then there's a battery indicator um, and then this over here shows what mode I'm in. I mean the film speed if you're in um, aperture priority the film speed shows here where the shutter speed normally shows in manual mode. Uh, the back There's a little backlight which is pretty nice and uh, then these buttons are how you set the uh, you can set um, your uh, the time and the date and that will get imprinted between your negatives and um, then this button is your auto focus, auto focus uh, versus manual focus. This guy right here this button pops up to flash so that's another cool thing about this camera. It's very versatile. It's got a built-in flash. And the other button is the self-timer. 
there's one more control and that's the zoom control. While it is a zoom lens it only has four positions so now I'm uh, racked into wide angle and I hit it once, twice, three times, it won't go anymore. So I've got a total of four positions for the zoom. How do you load film into this guy? Let me uh, I'm going to turn it off for a moment. And this camera, one interesting thing about it is it opens on what I consider to be the wrong side. So it opens on this side and hinges. In most Fuji medium format cameras, they work the same. These little red buttons release the uh, spool holders and then you kind of pop the spool out. This is the loading side and this is the take up side. So you first got to move this over and then you jiggle your uh, spool around, take up spool around until you can get this button to lock back in. Now you kind of keep some tension on and you use this multifunction knob to wind the film on. And you want to keep rolling it on until the arrow on the back of the film matches up with this little dot I'm pointing at here. Once you've done that, you close the back and it'll wind the rest of the film on for you. Then you'll need to set your ISO and that is done by again pushing this button down. You turn this multifunction dial to ISO. Now the back shows your current ISO setting and you use this multifunction dial to change it. And basically you treat it like a point and shoot if you want to. Put it in program mode and, and fire away. As I said before I tend to shoot it in aperture priority or manual and um, that's because I do a lot of landscape photography and I want to be in control of my uh, uh, exposure. Okay, so here we're looking through the viewfinder. Anyway, the primary thing to notice here is that the frame is vertical. You see frame lines there. I hope you can see them. Um, that indicates the, the edges of the frame, but the uh, viewfinder does zoom with the lens. And there is some information in the finder you can see that I'm f8 at 60th of a second here. You also see a distance scale on the right. And I, I don't know if I can get it to change enough for you to see the difference. You can see it move down a little there. Um, and there's some blinking lights in there to let you know if your exposure is good or bad or whether the camera can't figure out focus, that sort of thing. One feature I love about this camera is it has an adjustable diopter. You turn this little knurled ring here and that changes the uh, power of the uh, viewfinder. I have a couple of, of accessories um, for this camera. The first is a lens hood. One thing I don't like about this camera is to put the lens hood on you have to take the lens cap off and once that's done you can't put the lens cap back on. And the other thing I don't like about it a lot is it's a little bit tricky to figure out how to get the uh, lens hood bayoneted on. You kind of have to hold your mouth just right especially if you're looking through the back of a video camera. Now it's on. But one nice thing is the uh, the lens hood will fit over did a better job that time uh, will fit over a mounted filter. So that's a pretty nice thing. I got my camera off of eBay and it came with this nice little cover um, that you can put on protects the camera fairly well. One thing I don't like about it is it doesn't have anywhere for me to put the hood. I can't put the camera in with the hood on, so you kind of have to just throw this in your pocket and hope you never lose it because I think they're as rare as hen's teeth out there. That's about it for the details on this camera. Again, I think it's a really great vacation camera and it has uh, stood me very well in a variety of situations where I uh, normally wouldn't carry a medium format camera. I've taken it hiking, for example, and never even noticed it was there. Got some beautiful shots in different parts of Colorado. Got some beautiful shots in Kentucky. And uh, this is a camera I'm always going to keep. It's just too versatile to ever let go of. So I hope that uh, this was useful to you guys. Stay tuned for more camera videos, and I'll talk to you later.